This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to another episode of Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. I'm your co-host Matt Johnson and we are here every other Thursday talking to Hawaii's movers and shakers in local agriculture and food. So this is our holiday edition, so Merry Christmas and also Happy Winter Solstice. Mm -hmm. So also with me today is a co-host, Pumai Weigert who is new to the show, but you'll be seeing a lot more of her. So welcome, Pumai. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining the mm -hmm. Think Tech and Hawaii Food and Farmers Series team. Here to help. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> Even more than you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Thanks uh, for having me. <laughs> of course. Uh, as always, you can join the conversation by tweeting at thinktechhi, and you can even call in if you're not into the online social media at 808-374-2014. So, Pumai, why don't we go ahead and get started and have you introduce our guest? Sure. Everyone, this is Jessica Rohr, uh, but we just call her Jess for short, um, and she has a business that deals with local meats. So I'm going to pass it over to her and she's going to tell us a little bit about what she's been doing, what she's been up to. Yes, thank you, Pumai. Thank you guys for having me. Um, so I sell local meats at farmers markets. We have three markets um, so far. We do the Aloha Farm Lovers at Kaka'ako and then Kailua. And then we also have one at Waianae on Saturdays as well. So I sell um, grass-fed beef, 100% grass-fed beef wild Maui Nui venison, mm. we have Niihau lamb and Niihau antelope, which are pretty much wild, there's no fences, so yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah and then we also have Mikilua pork from Two Lady Farmers, Oh, um, yeah, we occasionally sell fish and a few other things and spices, but primarily just focusing on local meats and trying to increase the availability of, um, of that. So should we talk about how you got to this point <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah is that is let's, that kind of what's next let's, on let's the agenda go there. okay okay so um i started out uh, with a food truck um, not really wanting to do a food truck but um, i didn't want to get stuck in a hot box all day um, but what i really wanted to do was to get people to eat more venison because um, i just thought it's such a great meat that we have it's sustainable um, it's invasive mm -hmm. it's delicious and it's really good for you so um, I was also fishing at the time, so we had a lot of fish, um, and we just, I just wanted to get it out there. So um, a friend of mine had a food truck, and so we were selling food out of the food truck. Um, I was not super stoked about being stuck in a food truck all day. It was kind of hot. And, so, um, and then I just wanted it. I, I wasn't feeling like I was reaching enough people with the venison and whatnot. And then I also realized that we're not selling that. Um, we, at the time, we weren't really selling it retail. Like, Nobody could get their hands on it besides maybe a restaurant. Mm -hmm. So that's where I, I created our first little pop-up meat market at Kaka'ako. And um, it started out really slow, and that was about a year ago in October. Um, but now we do about 1,000 pounds a month wow. of various meats. Yeah, cool. and hoping to do more and hoping to reach more people with um, like a pasture-to-door delivery service. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hopefully by next month. Okay. So what, what's the experience like? So if we came and saw you at uh, Aloha Farm Lovers uh, Market, what, what would we expect? Yeah, so um, we have a variety of cuts depending on what's in stock. And, and we also do special orders. But everything comes vacuum sealed, USDA inspected, and fresh frozen. And I have um, oh, an example. Oh, you show us. Yay. So it's getting a little frosty here. But this is um, some Maui Nui venison. So it's packed just like that. I want to see. Yeah. Kind of, you have to um, thaw it out, but all our customers have been really happy with the quality. Uh, Maui Nui does mm. a really great job with the venison. This is a pack of stew meat. Oh. And also, um, you know, on my Instagram story, I do a lot of cooking with these meats, and I, um, I have a venison taco recipe up on there um, on the Instagram. And then I'm going to continue to create more recipes because a lot of people, they get the meat, and then they want to you know, know how to cook it. Mm -hmm. So that's how it comes. Um, you can purchase... Um, anything from the beef, different cuts. We have ground beef, we have steaks, um, we have stew meats and sliced meats, and then venison racks or venison loin or ground venison, um, lamb loin, lamb, uh, ground lamb, and a variety of other um, cuts. And then we also do sausages, so oh. that's kind of... Are you a one-man show <laughs> or...? I've got or... some helpers. Oh. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a lot of work um, in the last year to try and get it going. And, um, and it's not as hard as the food truck, so anybody who's got a food truck out there, um, <laughs> give yeah, you a lot of yeah, credit. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, um, so that's what we're selling so far. And then we're hoping to get uh, chickens eventually, oh. yeah, too, in the mix. So Jess, talk a little bit about like these different kinds of meats, because if somebody isn't familiar, they probably don't quite appreciate just, I guess, some of the inherent challenges that comes with all those different types of meats that you're talking about. So there's, you said the venison, beef, pork, you said antelope? Yeah, even antelope. <laughs> even antelope, and also lamb, which are coming from Ni'ihau. Mm -hmm. so, so basically you're sourcing all these meats from different islands, and yeah, just talk a little bit about maybe a couple of those meats, because I know there's, there's interesting stories, especially with the venison. Yeah, and that's something that I wish I could share more of. You know, when we're at the market, we're usually kind of busy, but right. I want, what I really want to do is, is tell the story of, of the hard work behind it that these ranchers mm -hmm. or hunters do. And the stories are really the most phenomenal part. Um, and you know, like I like to say, it's beyond organic. You know, we have mm -hmm. an animal that's just completely in pasture. Mm -hmm. um, they don't eat any other feed. And, um, and they're really, attest to the health of the animal and you know it is a little bit pricier but the animal has a better life it's been raised humanely mm -hmm. and um, and it's local so um, yeah there are some challenges I'm sure with the economics of everything because they require a lot of land so I think the ranches that we source from you know they they do have a backbone in that and I hope that as the demand grows that they'll be able to you know, see more like economic feasibility um, from that stance yeah mm -hmm. What do, you, um, what do you think people buy most of? And then what do you think is a harder thing to sell even though it's really good? Yeah, definitely the beef is our number one seller. Mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and I love that they're raised 100% grass fed and mm -hmm. they have 25,000 acres to roam, roam on. Mm -hmm. And I love beef, but, um, but yeah, I love to see more people eating the venison, um, definitely. That's where my heart is in all of this and that's why I started it. Hmm. Um, and it's delicious, so I, that's I guess where the program comes in that I need to spend a little bit more time on um, creating recipes um, because when it's done well, people don't even notice it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, right. like in my food truck, we did beer braised venison tacos, Ooh. and people would just order the beer. It was like <laughs> <laughs> just the beer braised. Yeah. Well, I was like, can I get the beer? Uh. And uh, I'm like, you mean the venison? They're like, what's that? <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I'm learning from that too. That you know, I got to sample more and that sort of thing, but. But the sausages are easy because most people are willing to try the sausages. Right, right, right. Yeah, but it is, I mean, it is tricky in terms of getting it to market. But we've, we've come up with a pretty good system. And now I think we can, you know, expand on that, especially with being able to, to deliver to people's homes, yeah, mm -hmm. in the next year. Yeah. So no delivery quite yet? We have like a beta version going, you know, like <laughs> okay. if, I, if, if I get an order over $100, then we'll, we'll work it out. Mm -hmm. um, and I just did a delivery actually right before I came here. <laughs> nice. uh, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of the end goal and, you know, online ordering and that sort of thing. So right now, most of my customers just come to the market and mm -hmm. pick up there. But it's great because it's all vacuum sealed. It's good for three to four months or more. And you can just load up, have it in your freezer. I mean, when you thaw it out, it can be in the fridge for up to two weeks because it's vacuum sealed. So that's something you don't get really from the store from for most cuts. Yeah. Great. So you have any thoughts? So is your background in cooking or is it hunting? I mean, how? <laughs> yeah. A little bit of they, both. Um, how, how did you? How did you like? How did this all get started? Yeah, yeah. They they call it a multi potentialite. I think is the word. Oh. <laughs> so you do too many things in all different directions. But um, before I started doing the food truck, I had been working on a fishing boat for five years. Mm -hmm. And and that's kind of where the food truck was. It was like venison and fish. We wanted to sell this wild stuff, yeah, you know? Yeah. And um, and I, I guess going hunting with friends and eating the venison and going fishing and catching my own fish and eating that, it was like this, this meal that was kind of like our ancestors would eat would eat was like a privilege, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just felt like, this shouldn't be a privilege, you should all be able to eat like this. Um, you know, it costs money, but um, but yeah, that's some of my background. I mean, I've done a lot of different things, um, but the fishing, I mean, I dabbled in agriculture with aquaponics, mm -hmm. you know? Basically, I just wanted to eat fish and I couldn't afford it, so yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm gonna go fish, I'm gonna raise fish, I'm gonna raise food, but um, from the get-go, you know, as soon as I had to buy my own food, I've always been into farmers markets and eating local mm. and sourcing local. And then I love hunting and fishing and oh. all of that. And, and actually, you know, even the farm process of, of slaughter and that sort of things I'm interested in. Yeah. Great. 
<laughs> so things for the things for the future. I know you said uh, you want to do some online. You want to do a little bit more delivery. Any different kinds of meats other than chicken that you're looking at? Yeah, so the chicken, we should actually have some next week, actually. Mm. But, um, but there's a really neat project going on in Maui oh. with Maui Nui, the, the people who source mm. our venison. Mm -hmm. So it's a team of hunters, and basically they're trying to create value from feral populations. Mm -hmm. So they haven't stopped at venison. They're actually going on to wild cattle. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're literally helicoptering cattle off the mountains oh, of Kahiki yeah. Nui. Oh. And it's all Hawaiian homelands, so a lot of the meat will go back to the Hawaiian communities, but then also to, you know, recoup some of the costs of helicoptering cattle yeah. off of a mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they will be selling some, so we look forward to that this coming year. Um, we'll also, through them, have some venison jerky that's really good. I've had samples. Um, and they think they have a program as well with, like, um, some kind of schools program where they'll they'll make jerky out of the wild cattle and give it to kids for school and so they've got a really amazing program over there and I've been on the hunt with them for the venison and it's top notch I mean it's just phenomenal Legit. yeah and it's amazing that they even got the USDA certification for it in the first place um, but they got it because they do such a good job and um, they have everything dialed in and the, the safety of everything is top notch refrigeration and cleanliness is I mean it's superb Wow. Yeah, because the, the process to be able to harvest wild venison is is pretty ridiculous. I mean, from what I know, correct me if I'm wrong, this is one of the only USDA certified operations for wild animals in the country. I mean, this isn't something that just regularly or easily happens, because these are just wild invasive deer all over Maui and Molokai that they're going out and hunting. Yeah, um, I believe, I'm not sure if it's only wild I know it's the only wild venison, because mm -hmm. all other venison from the mainland is farmed or penned. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also the wild antelope on Niihau that we get. Okay. Um, but yeah, I believe it was like a three-year process. Mm -hmm. You know, I speak with, I, I've spoken with the, the hunt, hunter and owner of Kia Hawaii who sources the deer. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the amount of money and the process that they went through was it's a miracle that they were able yeah. to do it. But mm -hmm. they kind of attribute it to, um, you know, their inspector being more agreeable than maybe others, yeah. uh, but they have... Because they have to have an inspector on, on site yeah. when they're actually going out and hunting. Right. And that so guy's you don't got just the... go out with a gun and just start shooting. It's it's a yeah. planned, planned process. Yeah. Um, that guy's definitely got the best job out of any inspector, <laughs> right? He gets to... They okay, go guys, out, let's yeah. go hunting. Yep. Okay. I think it's time for another hunt. Yeah, it's really cool. They have, um, you know, permits, and they use uh, military-grade night vision. Oh. And so one of the requirements is that they're harvested humanely, and so the animals don't get spooked or freaked out, you know, and then their meat is going to even taste better because it yeah. won't have the stress and the horm hormones. Yeah. And they have to get a perfect shot, you know, so the animal dies interest. So it's like instantly. a perfect headshot, right? Yes, perfect headshot. And this is... What? Yeah. <laughs> at night. It's so and cool. And sometimes, do they hunt from a helicopter, or is it just strictly um, on land? No, the state has, I believe, done some harvesting that way. But these guys actually just go out on ATVs. There's four of them. They okay. go at night. Um, they work really, really hard. And then they have a mobile slaughter unit. Yeah. And um, and that's how that's how they do it. Did you post a picture of them on your Instagram? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, OK, those, so those are the cool those are the guys. guys. They yeah. give the, the head shot, the yeah. kill shot. Yeah, yeah. Much what's I'm okay. lucky enough to have gone with them, which was That's really cool. cool to see. And um, is their training, they were trained, they just grew up doing that? Yeah, I mean, I think, I, I know a couple of them are from Molokai. Okay, so that, great. You know, that's like you're, they're not when you're born. Right, right. That's, yeah. their but, um, that's awesome. But yeah, the um, they're really good. Yeah, yeah, they have to be good at it. So. I'm not sure if they've been trained, but they were yeah. looking for another person, I think, to oh, join the team. But recruiting. it's a really hard, yeah, yeah. it's a really yeah, hard well, job. Because you have to fill. be that good, you <laughs> have to be as good as them. Yeah. So, and I guess that's why my passion kind of lies so much with the venison, because to me, it's so cool. Mm -hmm. um, but I really do love that we've got such a top-notch um, beef program, mm -hmm. and the lamb, and the antelope, and the chicken, and the pigs. So, okay. Well, that's super exciting. Uh, unfortunately, we have to take a quick break. And then we're going to come back and talk more about that and also your cooking. cooking. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just give us one minute and we'll be right back. Good afternoon. My name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show at 3 o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists 
both from here and the mainland on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. You can be the greatest, you can be the best, you can be the king come banging on your chest, you can beat the world, you can beat the war, you could talk to God, go banging on his door, you can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock, you can move a mountain, you can break rocks, you can be a master, don't wait for luck, dedicate yourself and you can find yourself. And we're back to Life Food and Farmers series where we meet every Thursday talking to Hawaii's agriculture and food movers and shakers. Uh, so with me today is my co-host is Pumai Weigert. Pumai, you want to introduce our uh, guest again? Yes, we have Jess Rohr from Forage Hawaii. She's talking to us about local meats uh, on many different levels. We just sort of went through her past, present, we're kind of getting to sort of the future. Uh, and we wanted to talk, why Why I wanted you to be here is because you do sort of these cooking demos uh, on your social on your social media, which really helps, I think people who don't cook with these kinds of meats not feel so intimidated. You know, I, uh, you make it really, really simple. So it kind of in your mind makes you think like, oh, I could do a braised something, something mm -hmm. charred, whatever. It all looks really fancy, but you make it at home. So I kind of just wanted to, uh, for you to talk to us about how you started doing those and how you do them, why you do them, and what you plan to do with that. Yeah, so, I mean, one of the reasons I stopped in the food truck was because I wasn't loving cooking as much as I had been, you know, mm. cooking the same thing over and over and yeah, kind of being yeah, stuck yeah. in a truck. And um, I almost took like a break from cooking for, I mean, I almost, I took a break from cooking and then realized, you know, through that, that my passion is home cooking. Like I, I'm a home chef. I'm not, you know, it's, there's a reason I didn't get a culinary degree. And I love the food science. I love nutrition. And then, and just doing recipes and, and cooking um, simply and, you know, meal prep and that sort of thing. So I only recently started doing these Instagram stories of my cooking uh, because I was kind of inspired by a couple of people that I watch on Instagram that mm -hmm. cook. And I was like, wow, this is really fun. And I don't have to sit and watch a whole program at Food, of food Network, you know, yeah. so I don't have time for that. So I just click, click through it. Um, and then I started getting good responses about it, um, coming back. And, you know, I don't really have a huge um, background in cooking besides just loving to cook. So from when I was a kid, um, like one of my Christmas presents when I was like four was a pan and a spatula and a stool so that I could reach the stove <laughs> and make and make scrambled eggs. So um, I just love it. And it's, I mean, I kind of actually procrastinate with it when you see me doing that. It's more of me just like procrastinating stuff. Mm -hmm. But it works out because a lot of the people do need ideas, they need recipes, and they need to feel like it's not a giant headache. I also noticed that you source a lot of things from a lot of other local purveyors. Um, and are there any favorite local purveyors that you like or um, new recipes that you've been kind of doing that you've been using an ingredient from a certain farm? Or a, I, I feel like what I really like about your template is that it doesn't just help your business, it's helping all these other little businesses. So um, can you share with us maybe uh, another agricultural business or other businesses that uh, you've been liking recently? Yeah, I mean, I don't prepare, I don't plan recipes ahead of time. Oh. I go to the market, I grab a bunch of things, and then I open the fridge, I'm like, what am I gonna make? Um, but yeah, there's a new vendor at our market, it's called De La Mesa, mm. and they're part of your Go yeah, Farm program. Yeah, like guys, yay! Yeah, so um, they make awesome salsas, mm -hmm. and then they grow these beautiful little sprouts and microgreens. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, one of the clips I did recently of our, of our beer braised tacos, I used some of their products, and um, I mean everything. I love getting the fresh eggs, and mm -hmm. I've, I've done a lot with Kahumana Organic Farm, so I really like to use their products, but Ma'o too, you know, I, I've lived on the west side for the last five years, so um, using the farms out there and Chakamoa or Kahumana's eggs, um, naked cow dairy, cheese, and butter. So kind of trying to incorporate everything where I can make an entire meal with just local produce. Um, and it really isn't as hard as it, as it sounds, besides pepper. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that part's a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. So, I mean, you're talking about the grand response you get. So, so you're basically you're putting these cooking demonstrations on Instagram and just kind of showing, like, hey, here's a recipe you can do with venison. Actually, I think we had even a couple of uh, clips we can check out here in a minute. So talk a little bit about that, like, so, like, so because we were talking about earlier, like, some of the challenges, like, yeah, people are very familiar with beef and pork, but sometimes if you say, hey, here's venison, people aren't as used to it. Maybe they think it's too gamey. Maybe they think it's Bambi. What, I mean, what, like, what's kind of going on with, with that, and what's the reaction you've been getting? Yeah, I, I actually have to um, educate uh, not just about the venison, but even the beef, because 100% grass-fed beef, it cooks faster, you know, it requires a little bit more care and, and you do have to do things differently. So and one of the things I want to develop as this next year goes on is a recipe program because right now it's really just me being like, oh, this is how I do it. You know, I'm not like a measuring type of person, but but I am working on that. Um, and so, yeah, it's good because I can like get little pieces in there of, you know, this is a good tip for this or this is a good technique. So mm -hmm. I guess. Um, Eventually, that'll all be you know put onto my website. But um, the recipes themselves have yet to been right to be written down um, formally. Um, but yeah, like all the meat requires a little bit of help in terms of learning how to cook it. If you unless you have that culinary background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And is this anything you've ever like? Actually, are you showing these videos at the farmers markets, or is that something you've ever thought about doing? Or? No, no, this has just happened. This just oh, is like okay. I'm getting <laughs> messages on Instagram. I'm like, I love your thing, and I love your thing. Yeah, so yeah. now I want to. Do you want to be on Think Tech Hawaii? Because yeah. I really like your, I really like your cooking clips. Yeah, oh, right. Oh, so you stalked us? Uh, no, no, I knew her from before. Oh, okay. She was making mm -hmm. me aware that she was gonna start going in that direction, mm -hmm. and again, made it look so easy. Mm -hmm. And I really think that that component of opening the fridge and trying to find things that are already in there is also what people are challenged with. Yeah. You know, like, what do you have? Because I think in people's ideas, like, oh, it's going to be so expensive. I got to get all these things. But you source a lot of things that, like, maybe you might throw away. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. I have extra kale or I have extra this or I have extra that. And then you kind of just are like, hmm. Yeah, and I want put it people, on this meat and eat it. Yeah, I want yeah. people to be able to do that. You know, have the confidence to do that. So if there is anybody that I can inspire to like not waste as much food, I know there's like mm -hmm. a lot more media going out about food waste, and they say we waste like 40 percent of our food. Mm -hmm. You know, so don't don't waste food. You know, eat it and do something else with it, or just make a commitment to that. So I guess that's one of my things too, is to inspire it. But I want to find a good direction on where that's going to go. Um, in terms of doing the videos and cooking, but really I think it comes down to just um, giving people the confidence to cook more from home and meal prep and and use more local products. And I think that's kind of the direction. So we'll see mm -hmm. you know, where it goes. Um, any, any trends that you see out there in food or agriculture um, and cooking that maybe have not been quite saturated just yet, you know, just in, in kind of the things that you create, you know, I, I feel like to cook, you kind of got to be creative or uh, solution based. So while you're out at the markets or you're, you know, purveying this business, do you see anything um, that's like coming as far as business or industry shifts? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I've definitely seen a lot of like fresh box, you know, oh. doing these these um, ready to go things. I mean, sometimes I do prep stuff like a marinated pork loin or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just convenience, but it's funny. It's like we were doing all convenience, but it's kind of coming back to like learn how to cook and do mm -hmm. the steps yourself, which even like Freshbox will teach you different techniques, mm -hmm. um, even though they give you all the stuff. So I think the trends um, to cook from home are increased. That's just my opinion, but. Mm -hmm. Um, but I Your love observational to, statistics. Yeah. That's what I, <laughs> but in that's terms what of the, 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 you want to get technical. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of like the beef industry, like grass-fed beef has increased 25% every year for the last 10 years. Mm. So we, we are seeing like people way more concerned about the type of meat we're eating, and really that's my that's my slogan is feel good about the meat you eat. Yeah. Because there's so much information out there, and some of it's bad, and some of it's good, but. But um, the animals, when raised properly, can be good for you and for the environment. And, and that's going to be a trend that you'll see is more of that data and research coming out, mm. for sure. How about, do you do anything, like I know one of the challenges that other 
meat purveyors deal with, like uh, in, even the ranchers and the farmers, is some of the like, the off cuts, like the the bones or the the hawks or um, just this because yeah, every whenever especially mm -hmm. when you're working like a restaurant or you're making different food products, there's certain cuts that you're going to use all the time, but then there's all the rest of the animal. Is that anything that you're, and kind of going back to food base as well, mm -hmm. is that something that you're looking into with some of the different things that you're preparing? Yeah, yeah, I have a big passion for that because if oh. everybody wants to eat ribeye, you know, you're yeah. going to have to kill how many cows, right? So right, right. Um, to get everybody to eat all the different parts. And I really, you know, I'm just trying to get the butchers to do what you know, the customers want, but I'm also trying to, you know, get the customers to try and eat other things. It hasn't been a problem so far with in terms of the butchers coming back to me and saying, hey, Jess, we have too much of this. But I do have a lot of people asking me for things like beef liver. We sell a lot of beef bones okay. for bone mm. um, bone broth. Mm. And um, that's something that I, I tend to run out of a lot because I get I have mm. a high demand for the beef bones. But um, I think because that has been kind of a cool thing, and they're kind of able to get um, to sell a lot of those parts, like surprisingly. Um, so yeah, I mean, I will make I definitely make those orders when people ask for them, but it's kind of hard to, you know, say like eat eat a beef liver if, if people don't want to eat it. But yeah. it has been way more popular than I would have expected. Yeah. Are you cooking any of those weird kind of things yet? Um, I feel like I've only seen really good stuff, but I mean, I could see how you could maybe segue eventually into being like, hey, have you ever seen this be cooked? Yeah, that's a good point too. And you know, I'm I guess I'm kind of a little shy of some things, but like the bone marrow, for example, mm -hmm. you know, like um, we do the canoe cut bone marrow where you can roast it and dip it in bread mm -hmm. and stuff. And I think yeah. I was I was trying to try that for like four years and had to build up the courage. And when I tried it, I was like, oh, I'm crazy. I should have been eating this the whole time. They call it God's butter. It's delicious. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> it's so good. And um, so, yeah, and then one of the, you know, Instagram followers that I did um, follow did like a meatloaf with liver in it and oh. stuff like that. So. I do want to eventually, you know, get some of some of those things in there. But we have to the way that my system is and doing the markets, it's hard to have so much variety. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, so So just we have about one minute left. Okay. Uh, let's get into kind of talking about what's the future of you know, how are we gonna get more people eating local meat and what's the future of local meat and how do you see yourself being a part of that future? Yeah, I think for one is um, education so people understand you know, why they're paying the price for it mm -hmm. and how to make that economical in their family. Um, so you can still spend the same amount, amount of money on food and just eat a little bit less and higher quality meat and, and not waste so much. Um, and then um, like for future stuff, um, just increasing the availability, which is what I'm trying mm -hmm. to do, right? Just expand. Yeah. Um, and so to, to do the pasture to door delivery service for, for these meats is gonna really increase the availability and I think that'll be, you know, the part that we can help with. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, Jess, thank you so much for coming thank on you. the show. It's really exciting to hear uh, everything you're doing. Where can we find you? Oh, yeah. Kaka'ako Farmer's Market, Kailua Farmer's Market, and Waianae Farmer's Market. Or just go on our website. You can set up the delivery just through email. And the website is? www.foragehawaii.com. And the cooking demos are on the Instagram, at Forage Hawaii. Yes. Yep. Not yeah. forage. Hawaii. Not forage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> forage. Forage. <laughs> yes, Farage. exactly. Farage. Doing some metallurgy mm -hmm. out here. Goodness. Mm -hmm. Pomai, thank you so much for uh, coming thank on as a, as a host and being part me. of the team. And uh, yeah, so thank you once again and happy holidays. And we will be back in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah probably in a couple of Thursdays. Yeah, so see us. So thank you and aloha.